All right, so we are testing an evaporative swamp cooler myth today. I don't have much time, so I'm just going to show you really quick. Our in, inside the house thermostat says it's 80 degrees in here. It's been 81, 82 degrees today. It's 103 outside in the shade. That's what the official uh, temperature next to the, the post office has been here in Pomeroy, Washington today. So I'm going to hurry up and we're going to try a myth. We're going to dump a whole bunch of ice into the swamp cooler, evaporative cooler, and see if it causes this to drop dramatically. Okay, and some people put big ice blocks in there, but that's gonna take longer. We're gonna just dump a whole bunch of cubed ice that someone had that they volunteered, and we're gonna stick it in there and see what happens. All right, since I uh, got this ready to go, the temperature went back up to 81. And see, I actually tried putting in an ice bucket before, not as much, and I think that might have been why it went back down to 80. I don't have any other explanation. So we are gonna go ahead. All right, so, so far the temperature actually went up. And I think the reason it went up is because we had the swamp cooler open, so hot air from the outside to just go directly in here, that 103 degree hot air, just going directly into the house while we were filling it with ice. But now we've got the ice in there, so let's see what happens. All right, so I dumped the ice in at 515, and it was 82 degrees in here. And now, um, and it was 81 before we ever started, and now it is down to 80 degrees at at 528 p.m. So 80 degrees at 528 p.m. And it does feel cooler in here a little bit. So I can put my hat back on now. I was sweating pretty bad before I took my hat off. Now I can wear my hat again. So it, the ice does work. The question is, does it work good enough? Did we use enough ice? How much ice could we fit in there? Uh, when would we start freezing up the pump and things like that? If we, you know, if we put too, too much ice, I don't know if we could do that. There's a lot of a lot of questions there, as far as you know, how can we keep that water cool in the swamp cooler, and how effective is it? Well, I think it does work. And like I said before, when I put in a bucket in before, we got it down to 80 degrees earlier today. So, I think I think it's a myth confirmed. It does work. But how effective is it? That's, that's the question. It's not supposed to be this hot again tomorrow or the rest of the week, hopefully the rest of the year. So that'll be terrific. But otherwise, thanks for watching the video. May God bless you, your family, your business, your income, and all God has for you to do. Do you want to learn to follow the commands of the Almighty One True God? If you do, go to ChristianCourts.com. There's a free PDF book you can download, audio book, and video where you can listen and learn God's laws. Make America great again. Help establish Christian law in communities all across the world. God bless you. This video is brought to you today by Blazing Hog 4G LTE. Get blazing fast internet speeds up to 150 megabits per second. You get $49.99 off when you use the code and the phone number in the description of this video or the code right below my finger here, the coupon code. It works anywhere, rain or shine, within five miles of an AT&T or T-Mobile cell tower. Check it out. All you have to do is call 1-888-306-7062 and mention account number SR2808 when you call. Now enjoy the rest of this video. That's in order, son.
Alright, so hopefully you guys saw the video of me cruising around on the bike. I'm pretty sure I did that. Boy, that reflector's reflective in the camera, isn't it? Um, but anyways, I'm going to show you guys my lighting. I got my lighting all done. So there's the uh, just the standard running lights and the uh, license plate right there. Got the license plate light going. You can see it there. Okay, so that's sweet. And you can find that on howtobuildamoped.com, that part there. I got it for free. Somebody sent me that. And I've been waiting a long time to install it. It's probably a year since somebody sent me that to review. And uh, I thought, well, I'm going to have to build a motorbike for this or get an electric bike or something, you know. Anyway, so here's how this is wired up. So I went under here. I stayed the same colors. And then I went to, see, I went to regular wires there. And uh, the 16 gauge, because these guys claim that this draws like 40 watts of power, but it doesn't even register on uh, my power supply so i don't think it i don't think it really draws anything but anyway so wires go along here underneath the gas tank try to keep them nice and clean and out of sight there with the black wrapping around like that and of course you can see down here the extra hardware now i was able to use the same mount for the uh the uh, cdi there for the uh regulator um, now, a regulator, just a, a rectifier goes from uh, DC to AC, I'm sorry, AC to DC, alternating current to direct current. And uh, basically, I've, you can you can get those even smaller, but they've got to have a heat sink on them, and so that's pretty much the way to go. Fairybikebrightlights.com has a kit you put on. You don't have to wire any of this stuff up. It just has plugs, and you plug it all in, and it's done. But there we go. And then, of course, I got my motorcycle uh, headlight switch here. This is for four-way. I, I changed this to be four-way flashers because I need a switch for that. This switch sucks. This is the one that came with the headlights here, and uh, this switch sucks because when I turn them off, uh, sometimes the red laser stays on. It didn't this time, but there it flashes. There you go to low beam, so I don't use all my power. There's the red laser. It's supposed to be pointed upside down. The red laser is supposed to be on the ground. I don't know. I mean, I'd have to figure out a way to turn this upside down. And if I did, I think it would just hit my basket. Here's left signal light, right signal light. Somebody sent me these signal lights too. Uh, what I'd like to do, honestly, is have just a little light, yellow light here hooked into this, just so it's easy to see from the side. But, you know, this is the side profile of the bike. Even, you know, you can see I'm kind of behind it. And you can still see the signal light from this side. So, pretty good. Now, as far as the other side, though, um we'll do the same thing go back here now it's kind of invisible see so even if i put them i mean i guess i could put them up higher but i don't know anyway that's that and then of course my four ways and we'll go back and look at the back ones now brake lights are not on the brake lights are on would be much brighter of course i don't have the headlight on so my running lights aren't on because i connected all that together <laughs> 